Hello everyone again. Welcome back. Welcome back. And here we have with us Martin. He has joined us from the other side and I hope we can get to learn and know more and explore more many things today. And possibly if the episode is long enough, we might end up with two episodes where you will get to enjoy the conversation with Martin. Uh, welcome. Welcome to the podcast, man. And I hope you can introduce yourself so that the other people may get to know you. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you so much, Emmanuel. I'm very excited to, to be here. And You're welcome. I'm much honored. You're welcome. My, uh, my name is Matan. Originally, I'm from Israel. All right. And um, I was born and raised there did my uh, service there and later on i went to travel around the world All right when i came back i studied chinese medicine and shiatsu and afterward i decided to explore china i had an opportunity to do my internship in the right. local hospitals in chengdu uh -huh. And I jumped on this opportunity, and that was 14 years ago. <laughs> and mm, since long. then, yeah, yeah, it's a long time to, you know, how is it for expat in China? China right. Time is just running very, very fast. <laughs> yeah, very fast. Yeah, so I got married there. I have a beautiful, amazing wife and uh, three cats. And uh, recently, I came back to Israel. Uh, right. We can discuss maybe later why right. and how, because I think it's relevant right. to our discussion today. But uh, uh, yeah, let's see how it goes. All right. All right. Welcome. Welcome to the podcast, Matan. And guys, Matan is a virtual friend of mine also. And he was in Chengdu. He was in Chengdu uh, in Sichuan province in China, but he is back in Israel right now. And so we get to hear the great things from him. And uh, he runs one of the projects he has is uh, Yeoman Potential. And I think it's, it's the project where they try to help people in personal growth and uh, personal growth and professional growth in navigating, uh, helping people navigate through life. And so when, when I get back to it, Matan, uh, maybe you can start by sharing with me your story, your journey. How has it been? For, for instance, you have just been in China for almost 14 years. You have learned traditional Chinese medicine, which is, I, I think, is one of the coolest arts or sciences in the world. And it's one of the ancient techniques. And I think it's, uh, uh, as we are here in China, we see that the Chinese, uh, the TCM is very, uh, very good or very unique in a way. As from where I come from, we also have some traditional medicine and i see that traditional medicine has a unique thing and i i believe within the 14 years and the other years that even you are not in china you you have gone through something you have gone through a journey that is worth sharing with anybody so i would like to first hear don't hold anything back just give us the whole story so that we can enjoy the journey with you we can ride along the journey with you you're welcome share with us your journey sure sure uh, my pleasure if i have to think about a specific point where my journey began it's gonna be quite hard because mm, it started very early for me uh, as a kid i was always interested in uh, in metaphysics and in extraterrestrial lives and everything which is uh, out of the ordinary. Right. Um, well, when I was 10 years old, that was the first time I actually gave a uh, lecture in the local radio. Oh. <laughs> so, yeah, so you can see since very early age, I was into uh, metaphysics, spiritualities, and maybe um, everything we can say is uh, unnatural. But as years went by, I found more and more that I'm also 
very interesting in helping others. Right. And I started to study a lot of things. I was always a bookworm. And I, I love to take courses, but most of my study is self-taught. Right. Because there's so much knowledge available for us these days, right? It's just a matter of picking it up. Very much. Then sit down, right? Yeah. Pick it up, sit down, and, and start to study and implement. Right. So That's then... Um, so then I started a, to study a lot of things, but, but most of them were of more uh, spiritual nature. If we're talking about uh, healing, uh, ch uh, channeling, mm -hmm. um, I studied the, the crayon, the um, Abraham, I studied Kabbalah, I studied numerology. I, I study what else? I listen to the crayon. Every everything that you can think about in these uh, terms. And when I was sixteen, I also discovered that I really like computers and IT area. Hmm. So it was a bit of a struggle for me. I already thought about the future, and I thought about okay, what do I want to do in the future? What kind mm -hmm. of a person do I want to be? What do I want to do in the world? Right. So I started to work in both of these areas. I've studied the um, silver method and I've studied reflexology and, and uh, massage. Mm. So I could take on patient and start to practice my hand on uh, therapy. Mm. But on the other hand, I also worked in a uh, computers area. And I find out that helping people heal Treat people, right? Bring me so much more joy and, and satisfaction. So that was the point where I decided that this is what I'm going to do. I'm yeah. going to learn how to help and hopefully how to help people to heal themselves. Right. And then I by this time, I was almost 18, so I had to go to a mandatory uh, service in the, in the IDF. Yeah. And after the IDF, after serving of more than three years, uh, I needed some time off. So I went to travel around the world for two years. And as I said before, when I came back, I decided to go uh, full, full throttle, full in into TCM, which is something with always fascinated me because I also have a background in martial arts. Yeah. And when you think about the dim sum, the, it is a, a DMAC, sorry, mm -hmm. dim sum, DMAC, the points where you hit and cause damage or uh, the energy flows in the body. Right. It sit down with me and it was very intriguing for me. And so I studied TCM, traditional Chinese medicine. And at the same time, also I study Shiatsu, which is the Japanese and on uh, therapy, massage, mm -hmm. which is based on uh, TCM principles. So I've studied that. And then, uh, as I said, I came uh, after I finished here, I, I did internship in local hospitals in uh, Israel. Right. And with uh, I found a couple of teachers, um, I was honored they chose me to be their uh, apprentice as well. And after that, I came to China in uh, Chengdu, Zhongyin uh, Yuan, local TCM hospital, university hospital in Chengdu. And I find out that as a foreigner, I can't really live from it in Chengdu. <laughs> it was, at that time, there was not so many foreigners to sustain this right. kind of um, work, right? And then, right. Uh, my Chinese was not, well, it was not existed at that time. I just started to study a little bit of Chinese. And also it's a little bit hard as a mm. foreigner to treat Chinese, right? Right. And, um, and so I had to drop it. And uh, I'll jump a couple of years later right. to the COVID. Mm. And during COVID, I, uh, me and my wife, We've been struggling a lot financially. We yeah. lost 
almost every scene that we we had because we we spend a few years before that um to open different kind of businesses and and you know etc right but covid took out everything and we find ourselves pennies penniless nothing barely able to to buy food right tough times tough times tough times for everybody mm. but for me it was also an opportunity to work on myself to work on my relationship that were uh, during previously because we had so so uh, such a tough time we were on a brink of divorce we already decided to divorce and then you know so everything happened at the same time right. but covid was an amazing opportunity to work on myself to work on my marriage and to share with other people everything that I learned. My dream was that people, no matter how much they struggle with their lives, how much right. COVID hit them, they will be able to sustain joy. Right. They will be able to sustain hope. They will use their time to develop their skills. In a way that it will increase their self um, self-esteem right believe in themselves that they can do and achieve everything yeah, and this absolutely. is where I open yeah that, that's very important and, and covid was amazing time because we were closed inside a bubble that allowed us to go to do this stuff deep. we chose to go deep uh -huh. yeah. To go deep uh -huh. it didn't happen just like that you know that the pivotal point mm. during covid right was one day uh -huh. after watching after binging a series uh-huh <laughs> i binge like three seasons uh -huh. in two or three days uh -huh. me and my wife uh -huh. and the last season finished with pointless kind of uh, ending. There was a, not even ending, it was in the middle. And I got really, really upset and uh. angry. <laughs> and I took it and I look about myself and I'm sort of like, okay, this is applied to myself. What have I been doing so far? Right. Pretty much the same. I've been binging through my life, mm. but without a real direction or something was missing. Yeah. And then I decided to open the human potential. Mm -hmm. I decided to open, I decided to learn more. I decided to spend every day, eight to 12 hours learning, study and apply and implementing everything that I learned, however I can. Right. And the, during this COVID, the three years of COVID, right. every week I offered uh, free webinars sharing with people with people what i've learned sharing my experience and hosting a lot of amazing people right from from different places in china that were uh, willing to share their uh, their knowledge and at that time while i was working on my relationships and study deeper about relationship i gained so many insights and experience how me and my wife went from a brink of divorce mm -hmm. to an amazing, amazing relationship. And I wanted to share that as well with the community. So That's I opened so nice. another uh, platform. That's uh, so nice. Yes, I opened the IRLS, Intimate Relationship, together with uh, some amazing people, mm -hmm. and Nicolas Laurent and uh, Isabella, Isabella from Shanghai. I forgot her uh, uh, family name. Sorry. Mm. And um, so I started to give and host other people for relationship. Mm -hmm. And this is how my line, all these tasks came together into being the self-development guy, the relationship guy. Right. And, and this is what I mostly do today because it can help people. And that's amazing. What else can you ask if you can really contribute to people's life. If someone send you a message and, and say, thank you. 
Right. You you, you made a positive difference in my life. True. That's How great most, does it feel, right? That's the most fulfilling thing. Yeah. Um, so yeah, so the way I approach my my life. Right. The way I approach my relationship, the way I approach challenges, all based on self-development. Right. All based on first look inside, search what can you change about yourself? Correct. And then see how everything else in your life changing. Most of the time we try to do the opposite, right? Right. <laughs> we try to change something outside ourselves. We try to change our partner. We try to change our job. We try to change um, whatever it is, which is outside of ourselves. Mm. Sometimes it works. Sometimes not. Right. Because we all have some patterns, beliefs, and fears that determines our actions and, and manifests mistakes that we keep repeating or challenges that we keep meeting the same challenges again and again. Right. But when you change something fundamental about yourself, everything else changes accordingly. Correct. But how do you achieve such a change? What do you do? And for this, I use a lot of models, a lot of frameworks. Right. I, I think that if there is one thing that I wish people to take from today mm. is finding an efficient way work with themselves because I think it's very hard All right we want to change but sometimes we're not sure how we are missing the awareness we're missing the knowledge we're missing the tools and different modalities, different models. And it doesn't matter if you go for NLP or six human needs, or if you're going to uh, models from Gutman Institute or whatever it is, there are so many different models. And the more you learn about these different frameworks, the mm. more you try to apply them, the faster and more significant change you can see that happening in your life. Think about it like that. I often, when people come to me uh, for a coaching or especially for relationships, mm. they often say, I tried everything. <laughs> right? You know that, you're smiling, right? <laughs> Familiar. Right. Mm. I tried everything. Nothing's helped. Nothing can change. Yeah. And then I ask them a simple question. Have you tried, for example, the six human needs psychology? Do you know about the five language of love? Do you know uh, OKRs? I don't know, whatever model it is. And mostly the person will say, what? No, I never heard about it. Mm. What does it mean? It means that you didn't try everything. You tried everything that you know. Right. But not everything which is available, not everything that exists. Mm -hmm. So I find this lack of knowledge very inspiring very it's amazing because from being in a place that now you feel hopeless you tried everything you have nothing to do finally you find that 
you have so many other tools and knowledge and benefits that you can, you can gain. All you have to do is try something else that you've never tried before. Right. And see yeah. where it leads you. Um, the, 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 way you, the way you put it, it's, it's actually so nice because retracting, I was remembering the first time I, I contacted you. And the first thing you said was, how can I help? How, how may I help you? I think that that was a critical starting point. That I was like, okay, in my mind, I said, okay, this person is ready to help, is ready to help because I was just reaching out to you because of the, um, the wellness magazine. And the, 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 most people don't start with that. Most people just, let's say they, they would accept the request, but just keep quiet or they'll just wait for you to start. But the way you started is how may I help? Like the, you were ready for the, for the service. And I think you mentioned something critical about the COVID time. I think this, this was the turning point of humanity. It was the time where if you're smart enough, you will gain transformation. And even if you're not smart enough, you're not wise enough, but this time will just twist you in a way that you will have to rethink. Because even businesses had to rethink of a way to deliver uh, products or services to consumers. So uh, I love the way that you, 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 you say that you need to find an efficient way to work with yourself. In that manner, something that you're comfortable with, the path that you're, you're taking, are you comfortable with so that along the way it doesn't drain you? It doesn't, you don't quit on the way. You keep on going. And uh, I think your, your story is just interesting. When you change yourself, you'll be able to change what's surrounding you. If you first de deal with, with, the one, with, uh, with the being inside you, you'll be able to do everything that's outside. So yeah. I, I think those are very good lessons I'm, I'm, I'm grabbing. Yeah. And it's not that you're not going to face any more challenges. It's not uh -huh. that you're going to... Uh, solve everything and uh, your life will forever be beautiful and <laughs> shining. Right. But what it gives you is the power to continue. Right. And we have this background noise, I call it background noise of, of uh, positive emotions mm. because you can live your life and have uh, moments of uh, good positive moments and, and negative moments of feeling right. and emotions. Uh. But what is your constitution? What is the back noise that always there? Is it positive or, or negative? And it allows you to go through very challenging, very upsetting, very sad moments and period in your life, mm. but still maintain these inner strong positive joy or whatever it is for for everybody and, yeah. and this is the power i hope that people will be able to find within themselves right because right now i'm in a very very challenging point in my life mm. but i'm still so positive and looking forward toward the future i'm still working on building my future I'm not affected by my current challenges, challenges as much as I would have, let's say, four or five years ago, which would probably destroy me. Mm. And being of service, contribute to others is, is one of them. The, the magazine that you uh, mentioned, right? This is my Connected Wellness magazine. Mm. The idea of this magazine is to collect the knowledge of amazing people and share them for free Correct. to everyone who is interested. So I have a group of uh, people that happily you, you join them and everything is voluntarily. Right. Everything is for free and, and 
every person submit an article or share an idea or knowledge and we edit it and once a month we uh, we publish it to the official account or also as PDF for people right. who want so being of service contribute to others it's one of the basic pillars of For living a life which is more fulfilling that together with growth which is why also I always keep on learning always keep on developing mm. myself and other areas in my life because right. these two and this is Tony Robbins talks about them a lot about growth and contribution and I see it how it can effectively be changing people's life and myself included so yeah so the magazine the the widget groups um, being hosted is in a podcast the digital program all of these there's there's just tools to use to to open something in people's life right because right. There was something that you said before, and I, and I wanted to expand a little bit. Oh, how do we live our uh, life? Um, well, it, it's... Well, I, changed, I went outside the topic. Wait, probably it will come again. Uh, you, you, you said so many amazing things and I, I wanted to you know to touch to touch base with all of them right uh, but it's, it's a kind of challenging <laughs> there's a there's a way that there's a way that you exp- you, you explain about the time that you 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 were forced to to change the time that the covet time forced you to adopt adapt and And just oh yes go through the transformation and I, I remember you said something about you decided that you were going to learn for eight between eight to 12 hours and not just learn but rather uh, as a as an end result or as a final result is implement what you have learned and I think this this correlates with something I, I read before and I did uh, in season two I did I think episode five about change. And I spoke about the model, the, one of the models, which is ADCA model. The, the one for awareness, desire, knowledge, then ability and reinforcement. And the way you, you, you explained it is how you learned about the change. And then you decided that I am going to change. But for me to be able to achieve the, the, the thought that I have seen, the, the, the change that I want, I am going to reinforce it with these certain strategies, with these strategies. Uh, certain fundamentals that are going to stay and stick for a long time and you you even you 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 put this time as a time to work on yourself and work on your relationship which which eventually uh, resulted into something greater as you 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 can reflect back and say this is not the same as I, I, I would have deal with situations four years ago and now you even help more people like let's say the connected wellness magazine, more people read it and they get to learn about some just practical concepts that they can use in 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 their path of uh, growing themselves right and you started your man potential you later on went to starting the uh, intimate relationships uh, IRLs with the other people and we can see that it is the the the, the input has re- resulted into a great output so uh, there is a models that as you you spoke about that you use that you know and they are frameworks you have you have tamed them as frameworks that are helping you in 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 to tackle life situations and promote your well-being maybe you can also uh, take us through so that we can learn that the models that you know because i i believe you know more models i just know the one that i i practically use and You can take us through uh, the all application of the models. What are they? How can we use them now, apply them to real life? And 
someone can grow from there someone can achieve their potential from there sure sure that will take a while <laughs> um well first of all thank you you reminded me the point that i wanted to to speak about and we start from that and we go into models to see how we apply it good good but when you think about when do people go through significant changes in their life hmm. i think there are mainly two ways or, or two circumstances that happen the first one which is unfortunately probably the the one which is applied for most people hmm. we get into a point of our life which is very very low right a lot of the most amazing inspirational story you hear from other people is I was a uh, you know holding a gun to my head and oh I was about to jump from the you know yeah unfortunately we 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 sometimes need to experience or reach to the bottom before we can climb up hmm But another way is to give yourself the time to reflect, to look inward and decide that you want to change. Right. Not because you are at the bottom, because you understand that life can be amazing, it can be beautiful and have a lot to offer, mm. but you need to to change something about you about yourself so you'll be able to enjoy you'll be able to live more fulfilling life mm. and this is where applying these models comes into hand because without the, the beautiful about models they provide you with a structured way for you to follow Because when you want, you want to make a change, mm. sometimes you don't know how. You don't know what are you missing. Right. You don't know which questions you need to ask. Right. And writing the, like asking yourself the correct questions is everything. Mm. There are whole books that have been written about questions, whether it's why. Or whether it is uh, other, uh, other kind of uh, question. And I cannot go, there, there are so many models, and, and I only know a few models, right? There, right? there are so many models out there, and there are new uh, models that comes up every day. And I have a book which the, the, the butterfly who became the dragon, it's one of my uh, books that yeah. it's a self-development practical book that takes a lot of these models, both models that um, I came up with or they are based on some other models because I didn't invent the wheel, right? I only learned how to build my own wheels. Right. Yeah. And then they take you through these models, through these questions, one by one, give you the knowledge, give you the tools, provide you with maybe the awareness that you are lacking and mm. give you some practical missions, tasks to do. So you, you talk about one model, right? Yeah. Mm. And I came up with a very similar model, for example, which right. is A, K, A, okay, uh, to like... Two, the number two, two number two and, uh -huh. yeah, and P to progress. Uh -huh. What does these models uh, apply? When we grow up, we learn from our surrounding. We learn from what we see. Right. We learn from what people tell us. And then we learn from our own experience mm. and we come into conclusion based on our experiences. 
Right. And this creates beliefs, right? It creates fears and we have beliefs. Right. And every kind of knowledge in some way is limited. Every kind of belief that we right. have is somehow limiting in, in some aspects. Mm-hmm. Because it drives or it focuses our awareness on a certain aspect, because we cannot, you know, we cannot, we cannot uh, grasp everything, the whole aspect of reality. You can only mm-hmm. grasp a very small fraction of it. And based on what we more or less know, give us the ability how big, how far, and in what areas I can dream. Mm-hmm. And if we stay in our awareness zone, right. then we are missing the potential for everything else, basically. So I'll give you an example. I've learned since early age, I've learned first aid, something very, very um, prominent where I come from. Mm. And one of the things that uh, you learn that the brain is uh, need a lot of uh, a bit, a lot of supply of blood and oxygen. And if you don't get oxygen, two to three minutes, you're going to have a brain damage and you're going to have a lot of problems. And, right. And this is what I learned. This is what I believed in. It took me a long time to understand that that's not how it works. <laughs> that it's incorrect. It only when I become aware to people who defy what I believe in. And only when I had to see it more than once, it was not enough because, because our brain tends to disregard or reject everything that doesn't sit with our belief. But when I expose myself again and again to people who were, be, who were able to hold their address right. for five, seven, 15 minutes, some people claim up to half an hour. <laughs> yeah, usually with a um, breathing oxygen before. But, but the world of breath hold, the world of free dive, mm. it's something that I couldn't even imagine myself going into. Right. Because at my core beliefs were that it's impossible. So this is the first pillar of this model, awareness. Mm. You need to be aware that you are not aware. Right. Right? Right. And then you need to challenge yourself purposely seeking out information that either proves you that you are wrong or you don't know everything, you only know part of it. Right. Or seek information randomly. Something that you never thought about. Something, you know, seek on purpose, something that Usually is not in your immediate uh, thought patterns, thought belief, patterns. Or things like that. Yeah, just play with life, play with it, see where it leads you. And when you do it, you start to figure out there is so much more. But then what? Now you become aware for many other aspects. Aye. But it's not enough. Then you need to study. You need to gain knowledge. How is it possible? Hmm. How do I do that? What am I missing? Or what do I need in order to be able 
to belong to this group, which is outside of my, uh, used my to normal. be outside of my awareness, my normal, right? Mm, yeah. mm. So you gain this knowledge. And we live in an age which is very, very simple and available. Correct. But knowledge without application is a wasted potential. So this is where we need to go to the next pillar, which is action. Yeah. You need to apply what you learn. You need to practice it all the time. And it can take different forms. You need to find and build up your the, the strategies for you, right? That, that will delve into building habits of discipline and all of this. But, but first you need to, you go into action. Start mm. doing one small step today. Right. And when you accumulated, accumulating, sorry, accumulating these small steps, what happened? You progress. Something is changing. Mm. When I learned about free dive, it sounds amazing. Mm. Then I started to learn about it. I learned about the chemoreceptor in our brains, how the, the, what does oxygen and CO2 uh, doing our body, mm, study different types of breath work. And when I came to hold my breath for the first time, after one minute, I thought I'm going to die. <laughs> right? But, but, but you need to keep on going. This is where you take the action. Right. And slowly, slowly, you keep one action, another action. And you see progress. Then it came one and a half minutes, then mm. two minutes, then three minutes, then five minutes. So when you progress, you need to acknowledge it. You need to look back and say, I used to be there, and now I'm here. Mm. How far can I go in the future? Sure thing. So acknowledging this progress that we're doing, acknowledging our success is right. very important to keep to you know to build the cycle to keep on motivating ourselves. And what happened? Change the last pillar. Change. You are expanding your identity. You're adding aspect to your life that you couldn't imagine that they will exist, that you couldn't imagine they will be part of your life. The fact that now I can free dive and, and I love the sea. I grew up near the sea. Mm. But only now I can connect to it in ways that were never available for me before that. Before that. Right? Yeah, it, it, it enriched my life in so many ways, which is hard to describe. Now, I apply the same model for my relationship. Mm. This is how from being on the brink of divorce, now our relationship is only getting stronger and stronger. I apply to my training. Right. You can apply to everything, right? Right. So, so this is the basic framework that guide my 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 step my uh, whatever I want to you know my, guide my life basically. Yeah. Because there are always going to be more things that I'm not aware of, and I want at the end of my life to be able to look backward right. and say. My life were diverse. My life were interesting. Right. For some people, for some people, it will be I want to make a, to make history or to make a significant, you know, significant change in the world. But for me, is 
to know that my life were diverse, were interesting, that I live them to the fullest that I can. And of course, on the way, making positive impact for, uh, for others. And then you start to apply, when you come to the knowledge pillars, right. you start to apply different models. I have articles in my Human Potential official account. So mm. People can read and they can, uh, or in my book, they, they can uh, learn more about different models, ideas, and concepts that they can apply. Because you mentioned before, input and output. Right. And there's an article I wrote about it, which is based on a couple of uh, NLP models, mm. which... We get information from outside and it triggers us. But then the processes that happen inside of us will determine the output. Right. Now, what happened with this output? Eventually, it will bring a different input. Right. So if I'm talking to you right now in a certain way, I can say, okay, um, the outcome of our meeting was negative because you spoke to me in a very bad way. Right. Right. So I, so I put the responsibility on your input. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but if I put the responsibility on my output, Right. I can say, okay, you started by talking to me very harsh, but then I choose the way I respond to you and I try different strategies to communicate with you. And I found out that one way to speak with you triggers you differently, meaning that now you will speak to me differently as well. Correct. So now I will, so you see my output eventually determine the input. The input, yeah. And I can apply it in relationships, whether it's intimate relationship, work relationship. I can apply to circumstances in my life. I can apply to COVID. All right. COVID happened. It was part outside of my control, but... That was my input. The output is the action that I took during COVID. Right. I could binge TV or I can decide to learn work on my relationship, learn something and, and do it, right? Uh, right? So this is a very simple model that, uh, of course, need to, to go through different layers that we have. And I got to say that one of my favorite and I think most efficient models is Tony Robbins' Six Human Needs Psychology. Mm. This is a model that I was first introduced my, uh, by my friend, Nicholas Laurent, which is an amazing person, amazing coach. You should have it on uh, in your show. Hope so. I'll introduce you. I'll introduce you. Oh, thank you. Um, and this model is so simple, but yet it's so powerful because it's very dynamic and we can apply it to every aspect of our life. And it's easy to integrate it with other models. Right. And this is one of the models that I'm using to drive myself and to drive people to change their behavior. The idea of uh, the idea, the main idea of this model is that all of us have basic needs that we will do whatever it takes to meet those needs to a certain minimum. Mm. And every kind of behavior, if you look down at it, you will find that this kind of behavior, whether it's harmful or beneficial, is somehow answered 
uh, some of these needs. Right. And if a behavior answer more of these needs, if this behavior, for example, Tony Robbins says, if, it's, if a behavior answer to you of your needs, it's most likely to become an addiction. Mm. That can be great. Because it means that if there's something that you struggle with, you may solve the, the issue by understanding the needs behind it. Right. And then, if it's a harmful behavior, so you find a beneficial behavior the same, that answers those same needs, but in a better way. Or if it's a positive, beneficial behavior that you want to develop and you struggle with, let's say training, mm. right? You come for fitness and you probably say that a lot of people find it hard for them to keep on going and to motivate themselves. So you right. go, go back to these needs and you find out a strategy, find, uh, you build a strategy that your training routine will answer three or four of these needs in a good way. Yes. I read your article, your blog, yeah. and uh, also the next day uh, magazine, uh, which will come out at the beginning of next month. Right. I'll give a peek, a small peek. You wrote about... Uh, different ways, a question to ask about training. Right. right. I don't want to mm. give, I don't want to say too much. <laughs> but basically, you help people by asking questions to find out what is the, how can they motivate themselves to, to train. Right. And these are amazing questions. And if you integrate them with their needs, people will be able to come out with more specific action they should take. I'll give an example. Right. One of the questions that you asked was where? Where should people train? Yeah. In the gym, outdoor, indoor? Okay. So if we take, if we look at the needs, one of the needs that we all have is the need for variety, the, the need for interest, the need for changes for something new something exciting and if these needs in basically dominates in your life but your training routine is going to the gym and you struggle with it it means that maybe it means that maybe you need to yes. find other way of training right. that will be more interesting for you or more challenging for you or different. Or different, yeah. Right? Yeah. Maybe you will apply the maybe you will apply it inside the environment of a gym. Right. So you still go to the gym, but you change the workout or you take some uh, classes in the gym or something like that. Or mm -hmm. maybe sometimes you go to the gym, sometimes you're going to play uh, you, um, basketball, sometimes you go into the bars. Mm -hmm. but, but we need to be aware of it. We need to do this decision consciously. Right. Otherwise, we keep on struggling. We try to motivate ourselves. Yeah, I will go to the gym. I will go to the gym. <laughs> But you're fighting with your needs rather than find a strategy that will motivate you actually to go to the gym. Mm -hmm. Make sense? I need to change to. Sorry. Every conflict that you have in your relationship. All right. Of course, it's related to your uh, belief, your fears, your values. But one of the easiest as a ways to, to solve a conflict or to work on a conflict mm -hmm. is again, diving into the needs behind it. Me and my wife 
used to fight about money. Hmm. Happens to many couples, right? right? Mm -hmm. And every couple is going to be different. Sometimes it will be spending too much, sometimes it will be, you know, but, but we fight, we tell story. You did that, you didn't do this. Uh, why do you do that? We always have a story. Right. That leads to a fight. Mm -hmm. And when me and my wife dived into the needs that connected to the conflicts we have about money, mm -hmm. we realized it was not about money at all. It was about one of the other needs, which is certainty. And my wife didn't have these needs meet the sufficient way because I didn't understand that was one of her needs and I didn't know what to do mm. how or what should be done so I can right. meet her mm. needs for certainty. Correct. The money was the story. The beautiful thing that happened is that even though our financial situation haven't changed at that time, yeah. it, was still, it was still very, very bad. Mm. The fact that I learned how to meet her needs for certainty. Mm -hmm. And for every different is a, for every person is very different. We, we need very to dive deep. much deep. Yeah, it's very deep. But but the moment I learned how to meet her need for certainty, we never fought on money since since then. Never. Not even once. It's not an issue anymore. Right. Think how powerful it is. Think how many times we are fighting with our partners because we don't know how to articulate what is really bothers us. Because we are not aware of these needs that are not being met. So we keep up telling story. We try to hint. We try to express the best we can, mm -hmm. but we are missing the words. Right. We are missing the precise concept that will help us to express this is what I am missing right now. And as a partner, of course, you need to learn to listen. Active listening. Yeah, active listening. And it's more than active listening. It's the curiosity that even if your partner hmm. doesn't know how to express their needs, All right. you need to be curious and try to figure out a way to what are the way to help, exactly. What are the needs that they are missing right now? Right. What am I am doing, which is either taking away from their needs, or what am I not doing enough or correctly in order to meet their needs? And every couple that I've ever worked with that understood and put the effort to change it, to meet one another's needs, yeah. instead of demanding the other person to meet their own needs, the relationship transformed. Why, why do I emphasize this? Because in my perspective, relationships, are 90% sex. 
self-development hmm. and only 10% the other person. And if both partners think the same way, then this relationship can flourish. Mm-hmm. Because they're always focused about changing something about themselves and contribute to the other person. Think how beautiful that can, that can uh, right? Yeah, that's very that's nice. Unforeful. Yeah, that's, that's very good. There's so much more. I don't know. I don't know. Uh, uh, I mean, I, I like the way that you, you, you just explained everything to a summation of we need to, at one point, to be selfless. Because if you become selfless, you'll consider the other person. And by considering the other person, it means you'll be able to start dealing with a, with a wound in your, from your end instead of just throwing... Uh, arrows and and everything into the other person's direction thinking that they are the ones not uh fulfilling the 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 the, the thing or not giving you the satisfaction you want or not give, uh, helping you live the life that you want it's 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 a very good way that you 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 give me the 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 eyesight the the insight to know that every person has a basic need that they are willing to go up and down, far, east or west, to just meet that basic need. And once the maybe two of, or three of the basic needs, meaning the majority of the basic needs are met, then these people are willing to, to, to settle, to go for a change or to uh, attain satisfaction. And you, you, you gave us the, also the, the good uh, thought of, if you want to, to deal with um, any challenge that is among you and another person, meaning interpersonal conflict or interpersonal uh, argument, you, you showed us that if you discover the need behind, like the one greatest weapon I think I, I noted is, if you discover the need behind, you can easily, and, and you discover and meet that need, you can easily flourish you can easily go to greater hate yes. that if you you have a partner and and you see that there's a friction happening and all of this and uh, as you gave the practical example you were at the brink but when you went back and you know discovered the need oh the need is for uh to feel content to feel uh, uh security over okay. a long period of time you went and solved that need and I mean, the end result is happiness, it's joy, and you're still rolling until this moment. So yeah. that's, that's what I really got that the, 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 uh, 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 as much as the output determines the input, the input later de- determines the output as the journey is an endless cycle. As it goes, it's an endless cycle. The moment you discover yes. yourself, it's when you can look at, uh, at, at, at another person, uh, as, as I can put it from how I read from the Bible, is you can see the speck on another person's eye. The moment you see yourself, the moment you, yeah. stru- you restructure yourself, the moment you are aware, you have, so- you have sought for knowledge and you have done the action, then you definitely will go into progress. Because at that moment, you won't point fingers. You will be the, the person who first analyzes him or herself. That's yeah. very nice. And it can sound a little bit of uh, contradictive mm. because on one hand, right. we say we all have needs that we must meet. Mm-hmm. And on the other, other side, we said, we need to focus on meeting my partner's need. Mm-hmm. So how do we solve this conflict? Mm-hmm. Well, I think that's the beautiful part of it. A lot of us, when we enter a relationship, Mm -hmm. why do we enter into relationship? Correct. The why. Mostly from what I've seen and what I've seen on myself, Mm. we enter into a relationship because we want to get something. 
you maybe you <laughs> I don't know I never got into a relationship before I never mm. got into a relationship with the idea that I want to go into a relationship because I want to give I want to share I want, <laughs> like it was always because I want to have someone mm. that will make me feel good I want to have someone to spend time with I want to have someone to Whatever it is, right? Like, the goals. Yeah. I, I want to find my uh, second half. I want to, whatever it is, but, <laughs> but it's mostly oriented about what I want to get, mm-hmm. which is natural. And it's okay because again, we need to meet our needs. Right. But when you go into a relationship mm-hmm. and then You demand or accept, expect your needs to be met by the other person, All right Then there is a problem. Because think about the dynamics that often happens in relationship. Mm-hmm. If you demand your needs, All right. To be met by the other person, you can come out very self-oriented, very selfish, very abusive. That's very true. If you're in a relationship and it's okay, a lot of people do that, and if the relationship works for them, fine, I'm not here to judge. I'm just pointing out dynamics. right. But you see that they plain. Back and forth or or pulling uh, pulling ropes yeah. with one another right they're becoming very conditional. If you will do that, then I will do this. I will withhold <laughs> sex from you uh-huh. until you show me that one, two, three you want to, right we, we become very conditional uh we with withhold from one another we withdraw from one another we mm-hmm. set expectation if in if they are not being met we judge we give scores and according to that we decide whether or not and how much we will give back correct so this is a very volatile graph of relationship with a lot of ups and down now we The paradoxical solution is that I cannot say it's always right if, but we need to we need to be um, careful about always whatever we do, we need to assess it, right whether or not this strategy work and whether it's good and mm-hmm. what is beneficial. Right. But paradoxical solution that works, Yeah. Most of the time so far as I've seen is that when you focus on understanding and meeting the other person needs, focus on your output, right? Correct. What happened? You change the input. After a while, your partner changes. Not because you try to change him or her. You don't try to change them. All you try to do is, is to be side. the best, yeah, is to be the best that you can be for them. Right. Not how you think is being the best, but how they think being the best is. So you try to be the best for them, how they think you should be the best. Mm. And when you start meeting their needs consciously, consistently, They change automatically automatically and then they start to meet your needs or they are more open to hear and to understand your own needs so to break a cycle and to build a positive cycle right sometimes you will be Be the one that have to lead for a while 
If you're looking for fairness, if you're looking for equal distribution or contribution to a relationship, mm-hmm. it doesn't work. The moment you start to quantify, it doesn't work. I feel that as a victim that you're giving too much or you sacrifice. Mm. If you're feeling sacrificing, It means that there's something about you which is not so. For me, the distinction between unconditionally giving and, and sacrificing are the feeling and the emotion that to attach to it. Okay. If I give you and it feels great, All right. I might... That's the difference between you we can say this is the difference between sacrifice and compromise mm-hmm. because sometimes in relationship you will need to do some compromise. But if you're doing this compromise and you feel great because it leads to beautiful places, mm-hmm. that's fine. But if you feel that you are sacrificing something, then there's more parts of yourself that you need to work, you need to attend to. Right. Maybe there's some fears or beliefs. Maybe you don't believe it can work. There, there's something there. It's very hard to pinpoint something. You need to most likely to work with a coach or, or a psychologist. But there's something there which is not solved yet. Correct. So it's bring us back to awareness. What am I missing? No, knowing what you're missing. Yeah. That's very, that's very nice. And I like the way that you have, you have, you have structured your, your model out of all the models that exist, the way you, you have restructured it to fit your, your practical life, like your general well-being, And awareness the knowledge actions to progress uh acknowledge and the change eventually uh, leading to the change but along the way you mentioned something about books and you mentioned something about one of your books that you have explained about the models the butterfly becomes the dragon so i i i, I hope i got the title right but you have explained about a couple of books and even before the podcast you you were explaining to me about how you how you manage your 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 time and you get into writing and make sure that you are committed after a certain time you know that if i write at least one page every day uh i will eventually finish writing a books a, a book after maybe in one month i might finish 300 pages that's already a big book that's already having m- much content So I would like us if you can take us on on that journey of writing the concept of writing how is it helping you and what are some of the already the books that you've already written and you can share with us because I know some of the articles that you have written so you can share with us that journey of writing Sure sure um When it comes to book, what we mentioned before is when people struggling with finish a book, right. go back to the mall to the models and and realize what are you missing, right? Mm. Sometimes it's just a matter of priority and time management, right. That will bring us to schools. So we, we mentioned before that if I give myself a year to finish a book, meaning that I need to commit to write a page a day. Right. But if I want to finish a book in a month, I need to commit myself to write between eight to 10 pages a day. And then in one, mm. in one month, I'm going to have a, a book. A book, yeah. Yeah. 
And if you decide that this is what you want, then you need to apply all the strategies, all the tools that you have to ensure that can happen. So for the book, let's say, why do I want to write a book in one month? Hmm. I need to ask myself my why, my reason. Yeah. Right? I need to find all the things that motivate me. And I need to make sure that they are aligned with my core, with, I, with what I want to believe. I think that one of, I also have a whole chapter about it in the book, that one of the reasons people struggle to accomplish their goals mm. is because they set goals yeah. that they're not aligned with. Okay. Either these goals are the expectation of other people that embedded mm. this idea in us, Right? Yeah. Like your mother and father said, you have to be a lawyer. You will be a great doctor. Yeah. Or your friend tells you, wow, you have so much knowledge. You need to write a book. Correct. And then you said, yeah, right. I need to write a book. But maybe you don't really want to write a book. Maybe it's not something that makes you feel satisfied or, or complete. Or I don't know. Maybe it's not, maybe it's not that, that for you. Mm, it's not your thing. Not your thing, yeah. So first you need to make sure that your goal really aligned with you. And there's many uh, questions that you can ask yourself to make sure whether or not it's really your goal or is it a goal that comes from the outside. All right. And then if you decide that it's your goal, then you apply all the tools. So maybe you, you will uh, dedicate two hours or three hours every day that you build an um, environment right. that have no distraction, mm -hmm. have nothing there to take away your uh, focus. And you notify everybody around you that between two to five, mm. every day you're not going to be available for the next month. And you schedule it in your phone. So you're going to have an alarm 15 minutes before. Mm. You will know you have a meeting with yourself. Right? These are just tools. These are simple tools. And there are endless tools. But, but we must use tools. I think one of the people, and one of the reasons people are struggling, yeah. because they keep their tools in their mind. Mm -hmm instead of in their environment. <laughs> you know, we often say, ah, I know this, so I don't need that. Right. I believe in that, so it's ingrained in me so much, it's like I can already, al already go without it. No, no. It might apply for a couple of small things, but the more you use the tools, and we have so many, the higher the chance you will succeed. And then you can apply also the knowledge and other tools that maybe you never thought about before. So I told you that I'm using AI a lot. Mm. Because it helped me to articulate my thought much better, Aye. in a more coherent way. So it's a tool that I can work with, and it saves me a lot of time. For other people, maybe it will be um, they need to join like creative uh, writing course. Writing course. Yeah. Or building peer group of authors. Mm. Right? There, there are so many. You, you need to sit down with yourself and list all of the resources that are available for you right. in order to succeed and all the resources that currently might not be available for you 
but you believe that they can help you and then you can find out again how can I achieve these resources. So everything that I'm trying to do is very methodically. Right. It's purpose-oriented. It's goal-oriented. A lot of people ask me about nutrition. Mm-hmm. What I love about Chinese medicine philosophy that the philosophical knowledge is so vast, but the practical treatment is very, very precise and individ- individual. The principles may apply to everybody. Right. But the actions and what you have to do should be very, very specific. And when I'm talking about goal-oriented, what you eat right now mm. should meet what you aspire to achieve to right achieve now. It. Right. Yeah. Same for training. That's true. It's very different if you want to be a marathon runner or ultra marathon runners or between if you want to be a um, weightlifter. Yeah, weightlifter. Power yeah. lifter. Yeah, or power lifter. But a lot of people trained outside the professional uh, level, right? A lot of people train mm. without a very specific purpose or goal in their mind. And also sometimes they miss the flexibility to change because we all evolve. We all go through different life stages. That's true. And what worked for us, what we wanted to achieve before, the needs and the way we want to meet our needs before might be very different from the needs and the way we want to meet them right Today. now. Yeah. Yeah. That's why self-development, it's an endless process. Right. Excuse me. Bless you. Yeah. Yeah. So in, in this book, I, so I wrote a couple of books. Some of them are short, maybe 30 pages. Right. And most of them about the relationship and goals. One of them is about the relationship is 101 quotes that I gave about relationship divided into four sections. Right. Dating, dynamic of relationship, self-development, and ending a relationship. And the other book, the book that we mentioned, the one that has all the models is the one you mentioned, the butterfly who became a dragon. I believe we're all butterfly. We're all beautiful. Yeah. But sometimes we need to go into this cocoon, focus on ourselves in order to be able to emerge as something as powerful as a dragon. Correct. And we might be needing to do that again, again, and again. I, I didn't want to say that we are war, uh, not warm, the other word in English, right? A love, uh, how does it call? Yeah, they become into a cocoon and then become a butterfly. No, we are already, we already, we all, yeah, caterpillar, right? No, we are not caterpillar. We are already butterfly. We are already beautiful. We are already perfect. Hmm. But can still go through transformation to become a dragon. Correct. So I have. 16 chapters that each chapter take one aspect of life or the process of self-development. And these all based on the journey that I've been in the two years since COVID. And every chapter give you some awareness, what's if, what, what is out there. Right. Give it the knowledge that you can apply. 
And at the end of each chapter, there are between one to three tasks that you can apply. And if right. you choose to apply them, you're going to see progress. <laughs> if you keep doing it, you're going to change. Very That's simple. That's very nice. That's very nice. And thank you so much. Thank you so much because you have shared with us, uh, you have shared with me and the, and the person listening. I think you have shared a lot of, of uh, useful, useful stuff, especially the part where you, you, you started by, I remember when you say there are two circumstances that, uh, that when we face, we need to change, that will force us to change. And one thing was the low point in life where like frustration, we just get to a point where we are frustrated and we don't know what's next and so on. And this is where we change is uh, impacted on us. And the next thing you said, it was reflection. So when we take a moment to just not necessarily because we are in a, in a troublesome or in a frustration uh, point, but rather we just decide that we want to go a certain way. And so we take a moment to reflect by ourselves. And so as to change the, the, the course of navigation and move to the other direction. And I, I think I quoted something that you said is find an efficient way to work with yourself. You made us understand that uh, as as you mentioned about the blog, it's actually you need to find something that you have, you'll find joy in work. Or, or I'll just say it. You you need to find a thing that a, a method that will bring joy while you're trying to achieve the the goal that you want. Uh, and this I like to say every now and then, even when I'm sharing my, my thoughts. It's like when you go to the gym, you need to work out. You, you really want to work out. The goal is uh, you just uh, were displeased with your body and you, you really want now to work out and gain, the, the, the back, gain back the, the person that you, you, you have in mind. The first thing, first, you have to redefine the purpose. Uh, make it clear, very clear why you're going to do that. And then you have to now find a better system to help you achieve that. Because if you just copy how someone else does it or how online uh, thing is on, on social media um, artifacts or uh, archives tell you how to roll, then you will end up feeling strained just in a, in a short while. You'll give up, you'll, you'll just go back to, to the original life. Like you'll go to binge watching, you'll go to eating without... Uh, regulation you you won't be mindful anymore but if you find a better system like let's say a better exercise that you're good at let's say you love walking then you can turn that walking into the the the, the greatest method that you're going to use to get back in shape if you are walking 5000 steps every day then if you you still do the same walking but because it's something you like to go to reach the goal, you just change to let's say twenty thousand for you to be able to burn a certain amount of calories every day. So, uh, with that said, is like when you get um, a vehicle that you like, a, a way that you like to race. In Formula One, maybe you like the team. You, you go into a team that you like. Uh, I think it will help you. It will even give you the morale, the the passion to continue going, the passion to because you know what you want and you know that this is the way that I am going to reach that destination. So thank you so much, thank you so much, Martin, for sharing with us. And it was, I think it was uh, as as the title went by that rediscovering our potential. And I think it even ended up into us uh, now living through our potential, a way that we can live through it. We can live towards attaining that potential. So thank you very much. And it is at this point that I welcome you to share with people uh, different ways that they can connect with you, how they can learn more about your, your thoughts because they are so great. So I believe someone might want to know more, might want to connect with you. Maybe they would want even for you to help them, mentor them, help them achieve the, the greatest uh, ambition, teach them about the models, especially the one that you you uh, renov innovated. So 
this is your moment to uh, share with us how to fatherly uh, contact you and reach out to you for yes. for for, uh, for them also to personally experience all these insights and all this wisdom yeah first of all thank you so much Emmanuel for having me here um I hope uh, we'll have a second part one day because yeah. I had a lot of fun I hope so too for people who want to reach out to me WeChat is probably still the best yeah I don't know if you put links or uh, in your podcast or YouTube yeah, channel. Yeah, I'll, I'll put on the on the the links. I'll put them on the description. But it's uh, it's pretty easy. It's yes. my WeChat is Matan Seven is M A T A N Seven, the number seven. Mm. And through that, they can uh, connect to my uh, WeChat groups, the Human Potential, the Wellness Connected magazine and everything else they can uh, connect me for uh, to get my books and right. yeah widget is definitely one of them well, now that i'm uh, outside of china i will start developing again the <laughs> other social uh, social media platforms but currently right, right. yeah currently widget is uh, the best way that's nice yeah. that's nice thank you so much and Uh, if you want to connect with Matan and you feel like you didn't remember what you said, M-A-T-A-N, Matan, seven, seven, number seven, seven. And if you have further more questions or maybe you want uh, a simplified way, just contact me and I will help you reach out to him. Thank you so much, Matan. Thank you for accepting to be part of the podcast today. Thank you for sharing awesome insight. And thank you for making that this episode was uh, uh, interesting, full of knowledge, full of lessons and full of uh, methodologies. And it's more practical because you gave us your personal experiences. You were giving us um, your, your personal uh, life journey. And that's, that's, I think that's the biggest fundamental that I try to uphold within this podcast, that uh, the stories that we share we try to make them as practical as possible because someone somewhere lived that principle that they are sharing. So thank you so much. And it was great having you on the podcast. And for the listeners, this is the Self Seed Podcast. This is season three, episode 12. And I hope when it's put into segment, you'll, you'll be able to listen to the end. I hope you can enjoy and I hope you enjoy it and you may enjoy furthermore upcoming episode. Thank you and have a good time.